How's it going, 3D printers? Andrew Sink from 3D Central here, and we've got a lot of really cool stuff to go over today, so let's jump right into it. You ready? Let's do it. Today, we're gonna be looking at this. This is our cuddly cuttlefish, or articulated cephalopod if you wanna get technical. This is an original remix, and we actually remixed this from E.L. Lindsay's Articulated Octopus, which is a really, really fun model to print, and I'm including the link to that in the description of this video. There are a lot of remixes of his original model, and you can find them all over Thingiverse. And there's also hundreds of makes of it, too. Because of the ball and socket joint used in its construction, it lends itself to a lot of different models, so people have gotten very creative in their remixes. And this is our version of it. And it also, the ball and socket joint lends itself to a couple of different design constraints. It's very difficult to assemble these individual components. Snapping them together can be really difficult, especially if you're printing in a stiff material like PLA. Richard Horn of Rich Wrap made a great video just a couple days ago showing his print of the steampunk octopus, one of the variants originally uploaded by E.L. Lindsay, showing how he built it and some of the problems he ran into using support material and the removal of the support material in the model printed in PLA, and he documented the whole process of building it with his daughter. In his video, one of the issues that Rich runs into is the problem with the ball and socket joint and actually fitting these components together. One of the main issues is having to heat the two pieces with a hot air gun in order for them to become pliable enough to fit. We thought this was a really interesting problem, so we took the original model and we actually fit the ball and socket joints inside each other as a 3D model and then laid it out in the build platform and we tried printing it with no support and just a raft to see what would happen. So here's a quick time lapse of it printing and I'm gonna show you what happens when we actually remove the raft and pull the ball and socket joint off the plate and what happens when you print it out in just one piece. Here we have the eight segments and each of the ball and socket joints have actually been printed in place. So if you look at them, you can actually see the ball and socket completely printed in one piece and there's no support on this model, just a raft. And that helps it to adhere to the bed. And this is printed up on an up plus two. So what we're gonna do is remove the raft. So first we're gonna put a glove on and then we're gonna grab the scraper tool. And Angus over at Maker's Muse just did a really great video talking about how dangerous these things are. And I'm gonna put a link to that video in the description and I could not agree more with everything he says. So be sure to check that video out. But let's go ahead and use this tool now to remove these pieces. So what we're gonna do is scrape and remove. And now we have one segment. Now, get the scraper tool under the raft and shut. And now this piece right here is now fully bendable, just like that. And now this is ragdoll. And that's it. So then we can just repeat that eight more times. And we have all of the articulated ball and socket joints printed out. Here we have the body of the cuttlefish. This was actually made to fit on the bed of an up mini, but you can print it on most printers. It prints with just a little bit of support on the back, but there's still some parts that have a little bit of droopage, so we're gonna clean that up in a minute with our hot air gun. First, let's go ahead and remove it from the build plate. All right, fantastic. And now we've had all the support removed, but there's still some sort of ugly spots on the bottom. So we're gonna take a heat gun to that real fast to clean it up. Just like with PLA, the surface discoloration and minor imperfections of ABS can be fixed using a heat gun. Using a heat gun, we remove some of the discoloration from the ABS. This also helps with some of the parts that fell and were then cut off and some of the strands. Great. Assembling the cuttlefish is pretty straightforward. Just take each leg and snap it into place. Whereas before, each individual component had to be snapped together. And this was really time consuming and also sort of dangerous. Because if you had your finger caught in here, you could take a chunk of skin off. But now there's only a handful of parts that need to be snapped in. 
So this is much faster and also a lot safer to do. So go ahead and repeat that for all eight pieces as well as the end of these little tentacles. And that's the Articulated Cuttlefish. It is a super fun print. Now that we have these pieces finally printing in sequence and the ball and socket joints print in place, it is way easier to build and it's a lot of fun to make. This is another really great open source design. And because of that, people have made all sorts of really great additions and modifications and remixes, everything from spiders to jellyfish to the steampunk version of the octopus and the regular octopus and various different styles of the ball and socket joint. And it's great, and it's one of the reasons I really love having the licensing so upfront and so apparent is because people can see the model and know that they're free to modify it and extend it and make variations and modifications to it and know that the original author wanted them to use their creativity and play with the model and have fun with it and share their results. And it's one of the reasons I love the open source community so much. I've also got some news about some upcoming events. If you're local to the Richmond area, you should come out to the Richmond Science Museum to RVA Makerfest. We're actually going to have a booth there and we're going to be showing off some of our 3D printers and some of our 3D printed stuff and just engaging with the community. This is our third year there and we always have a really good time. We've been going out to events like this a lot and we really love seeing people's reactions to 3D printers, kind of getting a feel for what the state of the technology is. And we're going to be there all day. It's from 10 to 5. It's a really fun event. We really enjoy it. So come on out and say hi. And the following day, on Sunday the 25th, if you're local to the DC, Maryland, or Virginia area, come out to the Silver Spring Maker Fair in Silver Spring, Maryland. This is our third year there at the Silver Spring Maker Fair in Silver Spring, Maryland, and we always have a really fun time there. In fact, in 2014, we actually won the Maker of Merit Award for all of our original designs that we did, and we always have a really fun time at this Maker Fair. It's one of our favorites. So come on down. You can see all the stuff that we're working on, all of our latest original designs, Designs. We'll have 3D printed stuff for sale. We'll have some of our new 3D printers. I think we'll have the Up Mini 2 and our Lulzbop Mini 2 machines I'm having a lot of fun working with recently uh, out there on display. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Come on down to the Silver Spring Maker Fair and say hi. I've included a link in the description, so download one, print it out, post a make on Thingiverse, post a picture, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to this channel. You can find the link in this corner here. And tell me what you want to see me print as usual, guys. Thank you so much for watching. It's great. We just passed like, I think, 1,200 subscribers or something like that. And our last video was celebrating 750. So this has been really fun. Thank you so much for all your support. And as always, have fun printing. <laughs>